the scholars, they looked at every Muharram, everything which is impermissible. And they came out with a rule and they said that every single thing that is impermissible, you can take a look at that very action and you can find various replacements for that action which are permissible. Anything that you can think of which is haram, you're going to find an equally effective and better, sometimes multiple different alternatives. Okay? And this was the same case in Jannah. It's a Jannah, it's a garden filled with trees. But there's that one tree, Allah says, don't go to this tree, this is the only one I don't want you to go to. Shaitan goes and through his whispers causes our parents Adam and Hawa to go eat from this specific tree and leave everything else. So what does that mean? That goes to show you that this is a consistent satanic trap that he makes the haram look beautiful. Even if he, even though when you look at that haram and you look at the alternatives, you'll always find an alternative. If you think about alcohol, you're going to find a whole bunch of things to drink, but people will go to that alcohol specifically. If you think about a woman who is haram for you, you're going to find thousands of women who are available to you, you can get married. And the same thing goes with men as well. If you find that riba is haram, then there's hundreds of alternatives to riba because uh, transactions, they don't, they're not, they're limitless. There's so many different types of transactions and all buyu, all transactions are halal. Except if otherwise noted. So any option which is haram, you're going to find alternatives which are equally powerful and they are numerous. Whereas the haram is going to be limited. And that's why when people say and they think that haram is limiting, in reality, the fact that you're observing to, to staying away from haram that's limiting you, in reality, that's liberating. Because there's only a few things which are haram. Everything else is halal. 